In the previous topic, we described the most currently accepted model of the atom. We looked at how electrons were arranged. To recap, electrons can be found at different energy levels or shells around a nucleus. A shell can be divided into subshells, which can further be divided into individual orbitals, where, of course, there is a high probability of finding an electron. The electron can be described by four quantum numbers shown here. We had also seen how these quantum numbers are dependent on each other. We have seen how the values for the principal quantum number n determines the values for the azimuthal quantum number l. We have seen that the values for L corresponds to a particular type or shape of orbitals. The values of L also determines the values of the magnetic quantum numbers M. Each value for M represents an individual orbital within a shell. For instance, in the shell where n equals 1, the S subshell only has one value for m. Hence, there is only a single S orbital. In the shell where n equals 3, the D subshell has five values for M. Hence, there are five D orbitals. Now we are concerned about how electrons are arranged in these individual orbitals and how many electrons can each individual orbital hold. This brings us to the Pauli's exclusion principle. The Pauli's exclusion principle states that no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. Another way of stating this is that no more than two electrons can occupy a single orbital, and if two do occupy a single orbital, their spins must be paired. Let us, for instance, take a look at how electrons are arranged in the helium atom. Helium has two electrons. Let us place both of them in the 1s orbital with opposite spins. And let us examine the arrangement to see if it follows the exclusion principle. Both electrons have the same n, l, and m values. However, each electron has a different spin quantum number. So they do not have the same combinations of the four quantum numbers. Hence, this arrangement obeys the exclusion principle. Now, if we place them in that orbital with the same spin, they would both have the same four quantum numbers. So this arrangement is not allowed. So far, we have seen what is meant by no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. We have also seen what is meant by 
If two electrons occupy a single orbital, their spins must be paired. Now let us examine why is it that no more than two electrons can occupy an individual orbital. Take for example the lithium atom which has three electrons. We can fill the 1s orbital with two electrons of opposite spin. And they will have different combinations of the four quantum numbers. So all is well thus far. But what will happen if we try to put a third electron into the 1s orbital? Remember that electrons can only have a spin of plus a half or negative a half. Let us place the third electron with a spin of plus a half. We can see that two electrons are spin up and they would have the same combination of the four quantum numbers and that is not allowed. So this is why a single orbital can accommodate no more than two electrons. In the case of lithium, the third electron will have to be placed in an orbital at the next energy level as shown here. The way in which we arrange electrons in the atom is also dependent on Kuhn's rule, which states that when more than one orbital has the same energy, electrons first occupy separate orbitals and do so with parallel spins. Let us examine what this means. Let's take for example the nitrogen atom which has seven electrons. We start filling the lowest energy level first which is the 1s shell with two electrons. Now in the n equals 2 shell we have the 2s subshell and the 2p subshell. The 2s subshell is at a lower energy level and so we fill the 2s first. Now we're left with three electrons to be placed into the 2p subshell. The 2p subshell consists of three individual orbitals. These three individual orbitals all have the same energy, so it does not matter which one is filled first. And according to Hund's rule, electrons first occupy separate orbitals and do so with parallel spins. Here I have shown all the electrons to be spin up. They could have also been spin down. This is how the electrons must be arranged according to Hund's rule. If you examine this carefully, you will see that this arrangement also satisfies the Pauli's exclusion principle. Each electron in these two p orbitals would have the same principal, azimuthal, and spin quantum numbers, but different magnetic quantum numbers. And so, this arrangement still satisfies the Pauli's exclusion principle. Now let us consider fluorine, which has nine electrons. We have already filled seven electrons so far, according to Hund's rule and to the Pauli's exclusion principle. So now we need to fill two more electrons. 
those electrons will go into the 2p orbitals. So now we could start pairing them up with different spins as shown.